welcome to the Good Morning Ovatarians podcast. I want to address a few things that our listeners have written in on on what happened to the HYHAT podcast. HYHAT hit the peak of success with its special guest, David Little. Each member of HYHAT received millions of dollars in AdSense to be able to take a long vacation. James fulfilled his lifelong dream of starting a cigar rehoming charity in Cuba and also is fighting the embargo. Yule, Yule had quite a different end. He went on the campaign trail with David Little and they won. And David Little, with his newfound success, him and Yule started a missile defense company. There's not much I can say about this for legal and security clearance reasons. But let's just say China has something coming in about 10 years. All right, Ovatarians, pull up your blanket, grab your bowl of soup, and let's talk about the ethics of Ovatarianism and electric vehicles. So, what, what, what's happening? Hey, Sam, Sam, Sam what in Sam. the world have you We're done? Back. Are you, We're back! Are you what are you talking about? I are haven't you? seen you in, in, in like... It feels like years. It's probably only been six months. Are you taking over the Hi-Hat podcast? Yeah, I mean, I just figured the equipment's still set up, and, I mean, we still got our... This what are is you talking about? Obatarians. This of justice. Obatarians? Yeah. Yeah. I was for all the Obatarians. Welcome to the Ultimate Podcast Experience with conversations about politics, religion, finances, and the meaning of life, and all the other subjects and stories that Nana told you not to bring to the kitchen table, and a whole lot more. Join our hosts, James the Red, you'll be back. Sam, the slippery smooth producer, as they settle the ultimate question: Have y'all heard about this? What's time to a hog? They're like, is he a safe person? There may be a razor blade in your candied apple. Okay, that's my job. Thanks, Mister. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to call it slow time, fast time, and crazy time. I mean, where do we go from there, hi hat lizard? Um, the Star Spangled Banner. Sponsored by Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I look at the kid, and he looks at me, and we just start a stare off. We're hey. back, baby. <laughs> we are back. I just you'll, got out of a prison cell be back. in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, <laughs> and I um, just want to say, look, I'm glad to be back on American soil, what's left of it, and I am happy to be back sitting in this chair. Well, like true patriots, as soon as David Little won the city council uh, election there in, in Huntsville, you know, like a true politician, you gotta you gotta start that campaign trail on the very first day with a fundraiser. So we uh, went oh, over to Abu Dhabi and you know really huh. spending some taxpayer dollars wisely to huh. to entertain the sheik, the sheik <laughs> over there. It wisely. Yeah, and uh, is he going to run for governor of Alabama? You know, you know against Kay Ivey. Honestly, as long as the campaign donations keep coming in, it really doesn't matter which <laughs> position he's in. <laughs> No, hey, congratulations to David Little. Um, we, we're grateful to be back today, for sure. Hi-Hat uh, took a hiatus, and um, we had to come back because David Little is a good friend, and I did not want him thinking that he was the death knell of of a of this podcast. It was touch and go there for a while. I mean, in, in all go. seriousness, we had some things going on in our lives that just prevented us from getting together and doing a podcast. Um, but you know we're back, and we're gonna we're gonna get back on the trail, get back on the weekly routine. Yep. And yep. you know we had so many. I had, and I'm sure you guys did too. So many people just lamenting the fact that this podcast wasn't in their lives to bring them levity and just humor and fun and entertainment, but also you know information. Where else are you gonna get somebody kind of giving you information about things that you would never even heard of or never thought of, but then also Talk about what it feels like to have someone break into your house in his underwear and rob you. Oh, wait, wait. You were in your underwear in that story when, when the oh, dude broke into your house. That happened to me. Well, was it was the police. Officer. It was the police. 
Um, <laughs> you know, I was just, again, telling the story last night. It seems that home invasions are prolific in the news these days. Apparently, home invasions in underwear are making a comeback. Yep. So that happened in San Francisco. What? Oh, yeah. Like people are like so. ending up in people's houses and stuff. Yeah, I don't know how That's it crazy. happens. You know, we had an ADT alarm system on our house. Um, I think people who are very high in government, they have some sort of security and alarms. I can't remember exactly how it works. You would think exactly if you were third in line to the presidency, you would have some sort of something on related to security at your house. But hey, what you know? Apparently, random men in underwear and hammers can just walk into the speaker just, of the house's just mansion and bust the glass right term? in. <laughs> <laughs> it may be. Yeah. Well, uh, yes. Yeah, as Paul Harvey says, uh, I, I can't wait to hear the rest of the story. Um, the wow. media is all a buzz, yeah. and uh, now you're you're an absolute um, far right conspiracy theorist if you question the fact that that happened. And and let me just say to be to be extremely fair, I'm not saying what happened. I don't know what happened. I would I think I'd like to know what happened, and here's why. It's one of two things. Either the person was was not an intruder and they were an invited guest and it's trying to be hushed up. Okay, you know, to each his own, right? Like, do your thing. I mean, I I, I don't agree with <laughs> it, but, I, but I'm not. an intruder. Or they're an <laughs> intruder. And, and to me, this is even more problematic because if the third in the line to the presidency does not have beefed up enough security that a, a, a lunatic can bust your window out with a hammer and walk in and then crack you in the head without somebody on side. The, the police were there. It was a 911 call, which dispatched police. So you're telling me there was Good no hands. private security at the Speaker of the House's private home. I, I, I don't buy it. Well, <clears throat> and I'll say this too. Everything's a conspiracy until it's proven right. And we seem to be on a track record of conspiracies being proven right as of the last few years. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'll just say like this for, everyone too. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm waiting for Bigfoot. That's not... Epstein didn't kill himself, and Paul Pelosi <laughs> knew this dude in his house. And so, so I'll just the window was shattered from the inside out. I I think I saw something. You know, I, really? I, I am yes. also. Um, I've told you guys before that there's an old saying that I tend to subscribe to that says, "Don't believe anything you hear, and only half of what you see." And so, especially, you know, the media is bad about it, too. Now, they'll use stock photos and lead you to believe that something happened somewhere that, it, you know, that's the wrong stock photo. And um, and I did see that photo. And so, I, you know, now I'm thinking, well, is the photo authentic? Because, it, you know, if it's authentic, then the glass is on the outside of the house. It's yeah. not on the inside. Yeah. We uh, we did actually get a review while we were gone. No way. So, and it was five stars. So to celebrity or, or, or just a person, this is just a person on Apple podcasts it's and it just says, a dude. just a I mean, regular old love dude. all the podcasts. What has happened? And that was from uh, Ayuka girl. Oh, wow. So, I mean, we got huh. someone, wow. someone from Alabama. No, that's Mississippi. Oh, Mississippi. That's right. Ayuka yeah. girl. When Jill and I lived there, I called it. Why Yuka? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why am I here? Hey, all right, come on. Wait, uh, I've got a, Ayuka got girl. A um, just reach out to our email. H Y H A T podcast. At Man, gmail. hey, com, and we'll have you on the show. If if ever you were given good advice in that first podcast, we'll it was it was when you listen to hit the subscribe button so that you're given notifications there when there's go. a new episode. Yeah. I mean, I cannot imagine the love and the smile and the laughter that's going to be spread when Sam publishes this episode. I'll do it as soon as I can too. And and I live up to my stage <laughs> James name. James is shooting me some daggers. And I totally live up to my stage name of you'll be back. You'll be back. You'll be back. We're back, baby. Well, good deal. Yes, let's talk about Halloween. Um, yeah, did you guys it. have any outrageous trick or treaters come by your house? No. Did I, you? Well, we went over to Tara's mom's, <laughs> and we were, and so it's just a, it's an older, like I don't say, it's, it's a newer neighborhood, but with older people generally that live there as a demographic. Um, maybe I should have even let off with all this. Anyway, <laughs> we went to Tara's mom's house, and it's this neighborhood where it's very flat and it's, like, it's a big, you know, big circle, and so there's a lot of people there, and. Uh, yeah, there were some. There was one man with his wife and daughters who came walking by with a big bra on the outside of his clothing, and he had spices stuffed down in it. And he's like, "You don't get it? You don't get it? 
you don't get it? And I'm like, what, what's there to get? A spice rack. Uh, and he's like, yeah. And I'm like, it's still inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. James is bringing the truth. I, I don't think we had anything inappropriate, although I was a little, um, you know, I just wonder about kids today. I, I remember when, when I was a kid, Halloween was such a a big deal to me. Like, I loved it more than anything. You know, just going out and, and trick-or-treating and all that. And um, the, one of the first kids that came to the house, and by the way, they start coming before it's dark now, yeah, which is fine. I noticed you know, that too. That's fine, but yeah. when I was a kid. It's like, probably no. a safety thing, but we didn't, yeah, we would have never done that. Yeah, we weren't concerned with safety. Yeah. <laughs> we weren't concerned about fentanyl-laced. Yeah. You know, candy. It was all like there may be a razor blade in your candied apple. <laughs> well, I did see it. Yeah, well, who, who, who gives away candy? I saw apples a meme the other day, and it was like, "Look, parents, drugs are expensive. Yeah. There ain't nobody yeah. wasting <laughs> exactly. your kids' candy." <laughs> but but the one of the first little groups of uh, kids that came, they came and they rang the doorbell, and we had we had some friends over, so we were all in there entertaining. So I, you know, I'm the one that's like running to the door because I love Halloween and I want to see the costume. Were you dressed as like Dracula no, or a zombie or something? I didn't dress dress up. I you was, didn't. You, I thought about it, but I didn't. You should have. It was like I've got you know I had some lentil or lentil. <laughs> lentil. <laughs> I had some some fentanyl lace candy. You know, I had a I had a uh, work call that actually went right to like five o'clock. Oh so gosh. I was it was. Not not good preparation, but he came dressed as Paul Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh, I can only see out of one eye. No, oh, funny, I actually hey, came in hey, as listen, Paul Pelosi's lover. You know, so. um, <laughs> speedy recovery. Wish there anyone who gets cracked in the skull with a hammer who's over eighty. Yeah, I didn't even hear. Old, is he I, was he seriously injured? Yeah, I think he's. I think he's fine. Okay. I, th- I mean, I think he's going to be fine. But, okay. Wait. Um, so he was actually attacked. This wasn't a lover. No, it was. No, he was There's attacked. Something very bizarre by a man in his underwear in his house. Yeah. I mean, it was. I'm it, so it's, confused. And he called nine one one, and on the nine one one tape, he's like, "Hey, I have a friend here who's. <laughs> a he's a, I, I he's, have an intruder, I a stranger if, in the house, but I know who he is, and he's a friend. Right. I know his name. His name's David, and he's a friend. And it was a dude in his underwear with a hammer. And then when the police got there, Paul Pelosi and this intruder, air, you know, quote quote intruder. <laughs> We're both standing in the foyer with their hand on the hammer, just kind of looking at each other in a face off. <laughs> and the and then, poli- the police are there seeing this. Yeah, and the police saw him rip the hammer out of his hand and start hitting him in the head with it. Yeah. What? Now keep in mind, not a secret service <laughs> agent yeah. in, in this storyline. Well, I mean, good point. for them. They have to call the police. You know, yeah, good hey, for us. Hey, they have oh, to call the police you know like what, everybody James, else. James, what if this was actually a hit that Nancy put out on him? Oh. Hey, Secret Service, um, don't be at the house tonight. Yeah. <laughs> no reason. You know, she no did deny the Capitol, the Capitol Hill police, or the, or the National Guard, rather, on January 6th. I mean, she was, she has her fingerprints all over that, mm. too. So, you all never right. know. So, yes. I just want to say about the trick-or-treaters. Um, the kids ring the doorbell, and they're in their costumes, and I open the door, and I'm holding a huge bucket of candy. And I, and I look at the kid, and he looks at me, and we just start a stare-off. And, he, and I'm not kidding. Like, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to hear the magic words, which are... Trick or treat. Trick or treat. And I'm staring at him, and he's staring at me. And he finally just shrugs his shoulders and turns around and starts walking off. See, and I was... I kid I was, you not. I kid you not. That happened. And I'm like, hey, dude, I'll give you candy, but there's a little magic phrase you're supposed to be saying. He goes, oh, yeah, trick or treat. <laughs> he seriously just candy. walked off. That's he shrugged his so shoulders and like was funny. giving like I'm 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 just I mean and I'm giving him the stare down like I'm waiting on something here. <laughs> He's going to be in therapy in like twenty years. Well, he like, should be. I, I mean, listen, if you don't have the 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 nerve to say trick or treat when somebody's standing there with twelve I mean, pounds of candy, that's like, the uh, one time of year you can say that too. Wait a minute, what kind of candy did you have? That's that's. Okay, we had um, we had some Three Musketeers, some Dum Dums. We had some um, Reese's, you know, peanut butter cups. Oh, that, yeah. Those, those are, I mean, the, they're they're the color of Halloween. You know, the wrappers are orange and, and brown. Oh yeah, right like on. whatever. Um, we had some of those bags that you buy that just have a mixture of of things, but I think they were all kind of chocolatey. I don't think we had any sour type stuff. See, I was here, you know, I live out kind of a little bit in the country, out in Shoggy Daisy. Um, but I was here with all my, you know, I had toothbrushes, raisins. I, I, was, I don't know why nobody stopped by my house. <laughs> well, I, I told, I told um, several people, kale. I told several people in the neighborhood this story. There was a, where I grew up, we had a similar neighborhood that was a big loop. And so it was a great trick-or-treating neighborhood. And um, 
But you know, I looking back, I do recall more people with their lights off. Like, don't you know? Like, we're not participating. You mean when you were a kid? Or? Yeah. Yeah. So you just, oh, I mean, yeah. you, you, you just go family. to the one, go to the one with the lights on. I mean, my neighborhood, it's like everybody has their lights on, and if they're not home, they just put some candy out, and then the dude, those third were the kid raised it. Houses ever. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. We had we we had a little we had a couple of uh, bags go completely, but. Um, what I was going to say, though, is is when I grew up, there was this one family, and I don't know if they did this as starting out or if they would kind of run out of candy and then audible to the next treat, but they would give you some spare change. And and in and, and, and of itself, that's a pretty good idea. Like, if you could go to a neighborhood and everybody gave away spare change, you may have a little haul, Gee, you know, when you get yeah. home. But. With with only one family doing it, you come home with all this candy and nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're not big into Halloween, and and we always have this mental like anguish back and forth. Should we even do anything at all? Like, should we celebrate this at all? It's the guilt. I'm with yeah. you, Eel. I grew up uh, loving Halloween, but it's it. I didn't. What I loved about Halloween were these things. Number one, the cool weather, going outside with my buddies, mm, and just yep. walking around. And we lived out in the country, too, in Saudi Daisy. Mm -hmm. But we just walked, you know, like the old country haulers and the back roads. And, you know, we knew practically everybody that lived within a mile radius of my house. So, I love it. Um, so, you know, we didn't worry about safety. But we were just outside. We'd, we'd, sometimes we'd have a fire. We'd be out throwing football around, you know, until it got too dark to see. And then we'd go get, you know, costumes on. And so I always enjoyed it. Um, you know, Terry grew up and they weren't allowed, they didn't do Halloween at all, which was also, you know, fine too. I mean, I'm right there on the line. I'm like, I don't want to celebrate, you know, demonic activity. I don't want to celebrate the occult. I don't want to celebrate spirits. Um, but I didn't feel like for us, that's what it was. I felt like it was just getting out and enjoying time with cousins and putting on costumes. You know, it's it's funny you say that, James. I think in the eighties, there was a culture of, um, really a lot of scrutiny on anything non-Christian, meaning the satanic rock, rock music, you know, like I, ACDC, Ozzy yeah. Osbourne, there, there's some of the other heavy metal things that, you know, you're just kind of told at church, like, don't listen to that. That's devil music, devil worshiping music. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, play it backwards and it tells you some weird things. And I think it, bands and, played to that. I, I really think of course it's they free did. advertising. Of course they it's did. free advertising. Yeah, for sure. And, and so, um, you know, same thing with, with Halloween. And I was, I was sharing with Jill last night. I had, a, I had a kid that I went to school with, I mean, all the way up, probably from kindergarten through, through 12th grade, who was Jehovah's Witness. And uh, they didn't celebrate anything. You yeah. know, like no Christmas, no um, Halloween, no, bir- no birthdays, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah, and and I'm like, I just, I felt bad for him, and he didn't feel bad. I was like, you mean you don't get because you know, big deal was made over Christmas and my birthday, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and Halloween, and like such a big deal was made of it. I'm like, I can't believe that this doesn't bother you. And he goes, No, we're good. You know, we get we get gifts throughout the year, and oh, and I still nice. remember. But, but he also had this very humble attitude. He was a great great guy. Uh, I've not seen him in many years. I'm sure he's not changed a bit, but um. I couldn't imagine being a non-humble Jehovah's Witness kid, though. I would be so mad. <laughs> like, I'd probably sneak out and do it anyway. To, I mean, to James's point, like that's kind of been where I've fallen on Halloween. Like We didn't celebrate Halloween as a kid. We'd always do the fall festival or whatever that our church would put on. <laughs> Which is also fun, too. I mean, Which is fun. I mean, yeah. we, we, we've done did did yeah. you see the Babylon Bee thing on that yesterday? No. It said, Jesus knows when you're guising your... Halloween celebrations is a fall festival. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really think it is the heart. I think it is, a, what are you celebrating? Also, I think a lot of people with things don't take into consideration the current cultural context versus they'll be like, they'll go back like 2,000 years right. and they'll be like, this was a pagan ritual. It's like, but it's not now. Yeah. You know? like, it's like, it's a Christmas tree. It's, it doesn't mean that now. It's, it's just because the... You it's know, a kid dressing as Barney Druid's the Dinosaur asking for candy. You know? <laughs> so we had some awkward kids, too, that would come up and just stand. You know, so, so what we did last night, we went to Tara's mom's. The kids all walked around the neighborhood, and I sat in a, in a, like a rocking chair at the end of the driveway with my uh, nice. two nephews. And we just all three were sitting there smoking cigars and now candy. Could have been the cigar smoke kind of threw the kids off, and they didn't know how to respond. They're like, "I don't like to see a safe person." This is a uh, this smells different than I've ever smelled. I've never smelled anything like this. But we had some kids that walk up and would just kind of stand there, and I'm like, "What are you supposed to say?" And he'd be like, "Trick or treat." 
I, I don't Dude, know what are we, with kids not saying trick or treat? I think I think kids are just deep. I think they're programmed nowadays to not be able to talk to adults. No, like I think right. they just don't know how to do it. They're just you're like, right. uh, kids. Just, here's your advice. One time a year, we give you the liberty to be precocious. Like, <laughs> come on, bring it. <laughs> Say trick or treat. Smell my feet. Even. Yeah, I got to <laughs> I was just making up all kinds give of stuff just to see if I could get a rise out of some of these kids and their moms. You know, behind them, I was like. This one kid walked up, and he had his back held out. And he didn't say anything, and I said, well, well what, what is it that you're looking for, young man? And he said, trick or treat. And I said, all right, here, here's the plan. We've got, we've, got, we've got four levels. You want to be a bronze member, you get one piece of candy. You can be silver, oh. you can be gold. And if you really want to get into the club, you can get into the diamond club, and then you got to tell 10 of your other friends to come over here. <laughs> and the kid was like, what are you saying? <laughs> so um, <laughs> his you mom guys, was like, hey, that's my job. <laughs> Listen, there have been a lot of developments, obviously, since, since we last published in June. Uh, so only, only four months ago, really. So okay. we're, we're, it's only like a been lifetime four. ago. It does seem um, like a lifetime. So you guys remember me talking about my roommates in college, Matt and Chad. And so yep, yep. the dynamic was Matt and Chad both co op so they would be in school in Tuscaloosa for like six months a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I and I became kind of the full. I was there all the time, and then they would rotate out every six months. And so we had all these combined um, kind of common possessions of uh, cookware and silverware and cups and stuff. And um, but Matt Matt's grandmother cooked some really mean salmon patties. And she assumed that Matt would want to cook that stuff at in Tuscaloosa too. So every time he'd go home, she'd send him back with a big cans of salmon, you know, like and um Canned and they would just sit in legit, there. By the way, and, I used to eat a lot but, of that. But dude, they would uh, just like sit in the uh, pantry, you know, for I mean, literally. Uh, well, I'm about to tell you what we did with them. Um, <laughs> but this is the same, you know. This is the same one where Chad cooked for his his fiance that time, and then I ended up just throwing throwing it all away after sitting in the sink for a while. Yeah. So I kind of like, even though it was all their stuff, I was kind of the permanent fixture there. The only thing I had there was like a lamp and a bed, you know. Well, anyway, one night we're sitting there at Halloween, and I don't know why anyone thought it would be a good good idea to trick or treat our apartments. They were so dumpy. Um, and like a bunch of college kids living there, like we don't buy candy for yeah, anybody. So, but we ended up some, getting some trick or treaters. Here's some fireball little kids. Well, what we now back in the day, that was Goldschlager. <laughs> that was, that was our cinnamon. Man, that stuff was liquor. rough. We would, so people started coming, coming and knocking on the door and I was like, um, hang on. So I, I always keep gum. And so I would go and get oh, some sticks no. of gum and throw in there. Well, Excellent. they kept coming. And I run out of gum. So I was like, you boys hang on a minute. So we went, and, or I say we, I went to the pantry and started getting those cans of salmon. And I'd give everybody a can of salmon. And I was doing it as a real kind of a mean-spirited, spiteful joke. And these kids were like, are you really giving this to us? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, thanks, mister. <laughs> like, I'm hungry. So... um you know, Matt. That's one last one one last thing that you had to move whenever you came and got all your junk. But can salmon. <laughs> but I just want to tell you guys, uh, in all the developments, uh, that that apartment complex was called Five Oaks on Twelfth Street in Tuscaloosa, and and Matt uh, broke the news to Chad and me within the last probably forty five days that Five Oaks is no more. Oh, it got um, leveled. It has been leveled, and they are putting up this, you know, very nice place that if I were in college, I could not afford to live at. Huh. Well, that's yeah. the end of an era then. I think Sorry, I, I could get this wrong. Uh, and, and Matt, Chad, y'all can correct me. I'll, I'll get it close enough to write. But I think it's like they are, um, these new condos that they're building that could be two, three, four bedroom condos. I don't know. But they're going to be renting them out for something like fourteen or thirteen or $1,400 per month per bedroom. Goodness. Like so, if, you know. What? So if there's a four bedroom, so it's not like you 50, can split it and get it down to two hundred a month with your buddies, which is what we were all doing. Yeah, you know, we had like I remember writing check, check for two sixty two fifty. That was my portion of rent at one point. And in fact, I think my first dude, I even paid two fifty one when you. <laughs> I think my first apartment, we had a two bedroom. We had four guys living there, so we were splitting rent four ways on a two bedroom apartment. So Beautiful. it was like one hundred eighty bucks. Beautiful. Yeah. For sure. Are they not allowing that kind of stuff anymore? Oh, probably not. I mean, listen, King Saban's in town, buddy. Well, also, Step too, up. you have to look at who is really, like, who owns these property management companies. 
You gonna start talking about BlackRock? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna talk about BlackRock <laughs> because um, I'll, I'll just get you. You don't want to go back to Guantanamo. I'll get you upset, but it's like, yeah, who's owning all this stuff? I mean, yeah. it, and I'll tell you, there there are countries outside of the United States who are owning oh, yeah. massive amounts of property, and they're buying it up, and they're buying it, and they're buying it, and no one's doing anything about it. So that's crazy. So Halloween for me was very uneventful besides the fall festivals. However, me and my buddy just got the idea one Halloween. We were just hanging out at his house. Um, we were like, what if we, and it was like a day early. It was like, you know, it was kind of like, it was kind of like, uh, yesterday, like Halloween was on a Monday and we were hanging out on Sunday and it was like, what if we just, or maybe it was on a Saturday. Cause we just went way early in the day and we like just threw on some stuff we could like, you know, it was like plausible deniability. It was a costume. Like, and, uh, and we just went around and we were like, you know, we were like 15 years old. Like we were like, we were older kids and we were going around, we got some candy, but we just yeah. went trick or treating early at like three. I, I was a little disappointed in my kids' costumes this year. They, um, really? they ordered these masks that they saw, I don't know, advertised and they kind of light up led kind of thing. And the mask in itself is kind of cool, but then they just had on their school clothes and a hoodie. Like. <laughs> no, that's. I mean, I can go on. Oh, man, just seeing the the quality of costumes, like you know, you used to be when you bought like a stormtrooper costume, or you had like a full on helmet. Yeah. Now it's just like this dinky little mask. Well, just like, I don't know where you guys came this? from and what part of rich you know America. You <laughs> I mean, in. I never owned when one when I was a kid. They were always the really thin plastic that had the rubber band around it. You'd put on. Oh, oh yeah! Hey, oh, did yeah. you ever see that movie? Speaking of that, Maybe it's always been around like that. <laughs> it was an old Kevin Costner movie. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Where the little kid was dressed as Casper the Ghost. He he had kind of kidnapped this kid. I think I do remember that movie. It's but a great I can't movie. Think of the name of it. Yeah, but that's the kind of mask yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Right, like right. it's just like basically a plastic apron, and then this little mask <laughs> that you know had. We just grind it yeah. to, your, to the okay. back of your Maybe skull. Maybe things haven't gotten worse. <laughs> well, so my kids went. So we'll see. Levi dresses Napoleon Dynamite, Let's and he go. pulled that look off pretty well. Oh, that's he's, he's got the curly blonde yeah, hair anyway, yeah. already the sandy blonde hair. Jesse went as a portrait of the girl with the pearl earring. It looked spot on. And it, it was pretty like <laughs> yeah. original, unique. Cora was this really cool, like kind of frazzled artist with like, you know, like paint it. everywhere. Like and she it. looked good. Uh, Everett dressed up as um, Calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> Yeah, but he pulled that off well too. He had like the spiky hair, and he was carrying around his hobs. <laughs> a lot of people didn't know that that comic though. Oh, they're like, dude. they're like, who are you, the, Calvin? Calvin and Hobbes. They're like, who's that? <laughs> so, which was surprising. I grew up reading Calvin dude, and Hobbes. It was me too. One of my favorites. I didn't even but, read, but I could read Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Charlotte dresses a little prairie uh, girl with like a pioneer dress, and nice. she was really good. Um, yeah. So. So yeah, it was nice. Uh, but you were talking about breaking news. I did hear a story this morning on the way in. I don't know if you guys heard this. Uh, there was a lady that got hit by a truck right here, uh, not too far from the church. Did you guys hear about that? No, no. Yeah, it was, a, it was apparently one of those Coca Cola trucks. You know those big red ones that deliver, you know, the cokes. Yeah, yeah, like a distributor truck. Yeah. yeah. And so she was walking across the street, and the truck hit her. I don't know if it just didn't see her or what, but it was right over here off Signal Mount Boulevard. Yeah. I think she's okay, though. I mean, apparently the truck was carrying only soft drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know that was bad. My dad's oh, We oh, are man. back. Are we ever? <laughs> are we ever back? I don't know. James just gets this tone, and I'm just like. I know. Everyone is like, <laughs> yeah, I can tell. I got I to gotta work on my, on my transition. I don't tones. know. It's good. It's not bad. Like, you, the way you say it is definitely like, that's what's painful about it is it's like. Is this a joke? Is he <laughs> going somewhere with this? Is this real? <laughs> it was only soft. No, oh my goodness. I mean, where oh, do we go man. from there, hi hat <laughs> listeners? <laughs> I have another one that I heard the other day. This is not like a story like that, but this is actually just a joke. But this old lady was watching the news one day, and she saw on the news that there was this crazy driver driving the wrong way on the interstate. And so she's like, oh, my goodness, my husband Harold is like in that area. So she calls Harold on the phone, and she's like, Harold, I just want to warn you. Apparently, there's a crazy driver going the wrong way on interstate. And he said, what are you talking about, lady? I'm here. There's like 250 people going the wrong way. <laughs> I, heard, I heard a pretty good one. It's not as much of a joke as a, well, I'll just tell it. It's pretty good. said that this uh, professor and Einstein were on a flight together one time. And Einstein asked him what he did. He said, I'm an accomplished professor. What do you do? And he goes, well, I'm, 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 I'm 
Einstein. I'm the smartest man that's ever lived, you know. And he said, um, oh, is that is that true? And Einstein said, yeah. In fact, he said, why don't I challenge you to a, a little small debate here? He said, if, if I ask you a question and you don't know the answer, he said, uh, I'll give you $500. He said, and then you ask me a question. He said, you, you ask me a question, Einstein. And if I don't know it, I'll give you 500 bucks. If I ask you a question, though, and you don't know it, you just give me $5. He said, okay, fine. So Einstein says um, to the guy, he says, what is the you know, chemical composition of you know, some crazy, he, he named volcanic magma junk coming out? And the guy says, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just don't know what it is. And he says, uh, okay. So he handed him $5. And so um, he looked at Einstein. He goes, what goes up a hill with four legs and only comes down with three? And Einstein thought and thought and thought about it. He said, you know, I, I, I just don't know. So he handed the guy $500. He goes, all right. He said, that ought to settle it. We're about even. He goes, no, no, no. He said, he said I just got to know. He said, you know, I've given you the $500. This is no more, no more, you know, like I, he said, you got to tell me what, what goes up a hill with four legs and only comes down with three. And the guy looked at him and he said, here's five more dollars. <laughs> Man, I remember those nights being a kid and waking up on, on like November 1st after consuming an entire bag of candy. Mm. That was me. D- it am was I, always rough. Am I, am I thinking of this correctly or not? You guys tell me. The time changes next week. So, mm-hmm. like, Saturday night. Is this night, the final one, or is yeah, the, the spring the final one? No, there's two a year. What, what, do, you mean the, what do you mean the final but one? But you realize, and we talked about this on, like, one of the podcasts. Yeah, but they got not, rid of daylight savings. Oh, it's not I, happening listen, I believe that when I see it. Oh, my God. I don't think passed. anybody's gotten rid of it. What did it pass? It's been passed in a law. By who? Congress and the Senate, I think. And I think it was signed by Joe Biden. Well, that doesn't count. Joe Biden didn't know what he signed. <laughs> what, okay, that would be tough. Now, that are would you be a serious? Tough what if they figure out the Biden presidency is illegitimate? And then I have to choose between, okay, do I want Trump or do I want daylight savings time? Oh, like that's, now that, that would actually be a moral yeah. quandary Ooh, for wow. me. Wow. I'm a pretty hey. one issue voter when it comes to daylight right, savings. Hold on, time. Sam. So you're telling us that, it, that you're <laughs> under the impression. That when we spring forward in the spring again, I that, think that, that is the that, final. It'll one. never change again. That that is, we can, I'll look it up. No, no, he's saying they're doing away with daylight savings. That means th- next Maybe week will be the will final, be final change. Whichever one that really sucks. <laughs> it's, this yeah, it's, it's this one. one. Yeah, it's this one. Yeah. So that's you. the one they're going to leave us on. No, no. Uh, I think it's the spring. No, spring forward and fall back. Right. Correct. Right. So fall back is the good one. Right. No. No. It's horrible. It's the one. It that means it starts getting dark at like four forty-five, though, right? You do get extra sleep, okay. but that's the one I'm talking. You about. also lose daylight. Like it gets dark at five thirty in the afternoon. So my, although it would get dark later in the summer, it's spring and summer just now, which I love. Right. Yeah, but, but but you wouldn't have that extra. But when hour you spring forward in daylight. Chattanooga, it may not get dark until about nine fifteen or nine twenty in the summer. In the summer, right? Which I love. Yeah, right, right. Um, yeah, that's that's the one I want to stay on. You, you know how much golf you can play when it doesn't get dark till yeah, night? Sure. Hey, honey, I'll, I'll be home about dark. <laughs> <laughs> how many holes do y'all play? I don't know, about Wait, 80. What the junk? Yep. Oh, my goodness. Don't believe In anything short, here. nothing has changed. There you Daylight go. Daylight savings time will end at 2 a.m. local time on November 6th. People in states that observe it will... Okay, but it, I think it is changing, though. The you're gonna, you're gonna have to move to Alaska, <laughs> probably, where it's yeah, just I'm, dark I'm, all the time. I think it's Arizona, doesn't it? I'm, I'm... <clears throat> I think Kentucky. Well, what's your God opposition to bless. daylight savings time? It's, it literally kills people. Not daylight savings time. You're thinking of there's no way it kills people. Standard time. It throws people's um, nope. It throws people's rhythms off. Can't do their it. circadian <laughs> rhythms. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> the kids at the bus stop are gonna die. You, you, so no, that right. was the reason for daylight savings time is stupid. Well, I'm yeah, not but Sam, image bearers of Sam, Christ, Sam, you know, <laughs> said that and they're wrong. <laughs> Do you know what the, um, the summer solstice is? Um, yes. What is that? It's the, when the days are the longest, right? the longest day is summer yeah. solstice. Yeah. <clears throat> all days preceding that mm-hmm. and all days coming after that are 
shorter yeah. and shorter and yeah, shorter yeah. if you go both ways until yeah. you have winter solstice, which is the shortest yep. daylight days. And so it. my point is, it doesn't matter what the clock says. Those are those events are still happening, and I agree that when the days are shorter, it I don't like it. When when there's less daylight, I do not like it at all. But that's not within our control. The well, it is changing the clocks it, and throwing you, off our circadian rhythms. But but we have clocks. Are, I mean, like right. I mean, so you're manipulating the clock, so it does change. And I'll just say this too. I think it's a you're you know with me or se- seasonal <laughs> seasonal affectedness disorder or like however you call it. I mean, that's yeah, a real thing. Sad. It's a real thing. It People is. lose vitamin D. They don't get enough sunlight. Covenant College used to see more counseling patients between January and like March than any time during the year because it was essentially in January. Covenant up on lookout is like two. It's like almost in i think it's like two months of fog or it's like two weeks yeah no it's two weeks straight of just fog could, there. could you imagine it's crazy you know having a having a job or something that did send you to north alaska to where for six months or longer it's just dark yeah all the time I, that and there's would, the opposite because my dad talked about that he's been really pretty far up north i think he's been in the canada and he was saying that it'd be like bright daylight at yeah. 5 a.m <laughs> yeah i i just no thank During you summer no, thank you. People would just be like out walking their dogs. At like that reminds that reminds me of a uh, an old Jerry Clower, a story that he he said this salesman was coming around selling hog feed, and he gets to this one farmer and he's telling him, you know, you you need to be feeding your hogs this this feed, you know. And he said, well, why? He said because he said on average, you know, from the time a, a hog is born as a suckling and becomes a full grown hog and all this stuff. And you take it to market and can butcher it and blah, 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 you know, put on all this weight, you know, it takes so many months, but if, if you can, you know, feed them this feed, they're going to, they're going to mature, you know, probably six months faster than they typically would. And said the farmer looked at him, he goes, what's time to a hog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got the Wikipedia. Is he still alive? Jerry? Clark? No, man. And he he, he hmm. was funny. He was okay, one of the I best. The Wikipedia art- article. What's time to a hog? Apparently, Kemp signed. I'm still on this. Marcel, let better. <laughs> what are you talking about, Sam? Kemp? Are we talking about Georgia? Yeah, apparently he signed permanent daylight savings time, Ooh. which is awesome. Might have to move to Georgia. Dude, he's about to lose I, an election I, to Stacey Abrams. Hey, uh, can is you imagine? Really? Can you imagine okay. the twilight zone we're going to be in if Georgia Literally. signs a permanent daylight? Savings oh, because no because we are the because sliver. we are one county over yeah. from the central time zone, so we're going to have to have Dunlap time, oh, Chattanooga no. time, and Georgia time, <laughs> and keep up with it. They're going to call it slow time, fast time, and crazy time. <laughs> Can you imagine the rioting at the Ringgold Costco when people get there <laughs> and it's the wrong time? Have you uh, have y'all ever? Uh, all right, in your many years, I'm a man of principle, though I'm willing to accept the consequences. In your many years, have y'all ever? Um, you know, because daylight savings always happens on a Saturday night, rolling into Sunday morning. Have y'all ever shown up to church at the wrong time? No. Oh, I I've have. used that excuse. But... I have. I've, <laughs> I've done it. I've done it both ways. I've shown up an hour before anybody got there, and I've shown up at dismissal, thinking oh. I was on time. Oh my goodness. Yep. Oof. Well, guys, I had a dream last night talking about the pod. I dreamed about I dreamt about the podcast last night, Success. and I dreamed that the three of us got invited with all of these like um, like super famous podcasters to take part in this government experiment where we were <laughs> locked in a capsule and transported to like fifty years into the future. Mm. <laughs> but then while we were there, something happened, and we were supposed to get back in our capsule. But uh, Sam shut the door, and there was like a little piece of fabric hanging out of the door, and so the capsule didn't seal all the way, and it shot us all the way back to the present time. So all we had was like this glimpse of what happened in the future and what podcasting would look like. What was the future? I mean, I don't remember everything, but there was some weird stuff like like we, um, the national anthem was um, the Star Spangled Banner sponsored by Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Is this is this a true story? You no, really I dreamed actually dreamed this. And there was all kinds of other weird stuff. <laughs> sponsored by Pfizer. I mean, it's kind of accurate. I can't I believe you didn't lead with this. That, that's I mean, that's I kind know. of breaking news. Yeah. Hey, all right. So here, I'm going to pose a conundrum for you. Would you rather, would you rather time travel? And, and, and whatever you do, it's permanent. Okay. Like you've got to just stick with it and, and then start your cadence again. 
Would you rather go 50 years in the future or 50 years in the past? Oh, man. That's easy for me. I'd go 50 years backwards. I think yeah. I would agree with James because what would really mess you up about the future is it's like, is it changeable or is it not? You'd like always, you'd see things and you're like, I don't want that to be, is it, am I able to change it or am I able to not? And I've always wanted to meet my grandparents and they're like, when yeah, they're so, my so there's that. I think that's, and I think there's also the fact that if you went 50 years forward, I mean, just imagine going suck. from 50 years ago and being getting transported yeah. to today. I think you would be in a culture shock that would yeah. like maybe ha- have like irreparable damage to your yeah. psyche. Like, how do you deal? How would you deal with that? <clears throat> Sam, would you rather go sixty minutes in the future or sixty minutes in the past? Oh my god! If I went sixty minutes in the past, I'd just stay in bed today. No, no, well, literally, would be... it's, it's it's happening next week. <laughs> 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 you have your chance for time travel. <laughs> I've, I've probably said Yule, this that before. That was a good one. That's a good one. Yule. I've probably said this before, but there's <laughs> there's an old American Indian saying that said, only the white man thinks you can take a blanket, cut 12 inches off the top of the blanket, sew it to the bottom of the blanket, and think you have a longer blanket. <laughs> <laughs> what if I mess with our listeners' perception of time and I put a sponsorship about Pfizer at the beginning of the podcast, and Ooh. then they'll just listen to it and be like, it was planned. Dude, I, was, I, I guess I'll put that thought in my mind. I was listening to a montage of somebody. I can't remember who I was listening to. But they were just did this long montage of CNN and, and MSNBC. And it was all like, this segment of CNN brought to you by Pfizer. It was over and over <laughs> oh and gosh. over. Um, let's see. I was going to ask something else about uh, time travel. Oh, 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 I know what it was. Um, Stephen King wrote a book. I think it was called... 1963. Isn't that the year that Kennedy was assassinated? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't remember the book. The book. I think the book was actually titled 1963. And it it was the strangest book because, you know, like most people, I mean, myself included, have had some fascination over the years of of the, you know, the Kennedy assassination, you know, the conspiracy around it, the, the, I mean, just the horrific events of it. I mean, it was brought, everything is broadcast, right? I mean, even Lee Harvey Oswald shot in the, in the jail, you know, by Jack Ruby and yeah. like all these events are a part of our popular culture. So Stephen King, master storyteller that he is, is combining all of these known facts that you, that you are aware of, but then he he does it as a time travel book. Oh my god! And so the guy's going back, and the I think the premise is that he he is to um, extinguish Lee Harvey Oswald and. So that the assassination never happens. It's it's a really cool book, but it it mixes enough of you know fiction with the truth that you just get done, and you're like, now what even happened here? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I have not read that. I read a, a lot of Stephen King books when I was in high school, but does I he read have that. the premise that you can't edit the past in because there's different oh, time travel? You know, theories. I can't remember. Um, in I actually kind of like that. I, I think in there there was a force. It, you know, if I rem, if I recall correctly, like there was theory. a force that was kind of saying. You can try, but it's not going to happen. Well, he would have to. He would have had to uh, eliminate LBJ. Yeah, I mean, like, how do you? How's he going <laughs> to no, do that? The I like I like the time travel theory that like even if you change that event, it's like the same thing happens just in a different way. I really like that time travel theory because I think the sovereignty of God. I think there's like even if time travel existed, I think like there's still the sovereignty of God and stuff like that. So I think that's the most accurate. Well, I agree with you 100%. I don't think Stephen King would agree with that, but probably not. Maybe probably not. not. I don't know. But there was a TV show when I was a kid too called Quantum Leap. Did you ever oh, watch yeah. That, that was a great That was one. a good show and it was the same premise like hey, it was some kind of like top secret government experiment and then he got he got the role of the person that was set to go back in time yep. and like change like events. But a lot of it though was not like big things. It was just like I remember this woman's husband gets killed by a truck or something. So yeah. he goes back and like, yeah. you know, but her life is like completely altered afterwards. I mean, if you think about two time travel, like I, I think there's some story I heard. I don't know if it's a movie. I don't know if it's a show or a book, but it was like that some guy tries to go back in time and like not change the past, but he just like kicks up some dust and it like makes somebody stop and like brush off their shoe or whatever. And then that causes like all these that person and ripple meet effect. their husband. Yeah. And then like, it, and it's true. Like you wouldn't Dang. be able to, I mean, if you think about it, like you think about like, I think about this all the time with certain things where I'll run into somebody that I haven't seen. Like, so what's happened to me recently is I've, I've run into three different people 
that I used to work with at Starbucks within about a month, a little bit less than a month period, three week period of time. I've run into three before different you get, people. Before you get too deep into this, like, was this at a Starbucks? No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was and and they're still over. working there. <laughs> I just can't believe it. <laughs> These are three different people who now live vastly different lives. Yeah. Like it was crazy. I ran into my boss. I ran into a, a girl I used to work with. She works at Clyde's now. She worked like, it, it's just crazy. Like there's, there's, I ran into a guy that knows uh, my boss and this like taking vacations with him. And I used to work with him. It's it's just weird stuff. Yeah. I just, I'm like, I don't feel like that's on accident. And I don't feel like that's I maybe, maybe you're in a movie that you don't even know. Like the Truman Ooh, show. The Truman show. Yeah, that was a good movie. Uh, I, I actually have been wanting to watch that. I almost watched that last night. You never, have you never it? seen it? No, I haven't. And I've, it's I've heard worth a lot watching once. Yeah, for sure. It's a, it's a good movie. Yeah. Maybe we should I'm do not a, a huge fan of Jim Carrey, movie but... review. Movie review. Don't get me like, started. Yeah, Jim Carrey. I'm I'm hit or miss with oh, Jim, Jim Carrey. Carrey? Is it a Jim, Jim Carrey's Carrey? in it? But is it's, he the main character? Yeah. Okay. And but it's more of a serious. It's not like a oh, it's serious. Role. Yeah, it is not Ace Ventura: Pet Detective. Mm-mm. Nope. It no. is not <laughs> Dumb and Dumber. It is serious. So, uh, well. so Jim Carrey, if you're listening to this, we you know we do like some of your stuff. So just take that to heart if you review us. I mean, Jim Carrey's pretty. <laughs> he's pretty brilliant. I mean, just his. Maybe well, not you know, his, he, maybe he, not his he's just a good but. example of somebody that when when he put it all out there, he, yes. he was like, "I'm I'm doing this, and I'm not I'm not doubting this." Back. <laughs> oh, that's true. There I wasn't his, any going back. I saw is, his first uh, is, his first appearance on Johnny Carson's The Tonight Show, geez. and part of me is like, it's really not that funny. It was all impressions, the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, but the way that he could just, just contort his it. face, I mean, yeah. it's like it was almost like some of those deep fakes that you see today. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. like, how is he doing this? Like, it was crazy. You know, there's a there's a commonality I, I see with a lot of um, a lot of people who are considered comedic geniuses use their humor to combat their you know personal inner struggles. Oh yeah, we were talking about this the other night. Ronnie yeah. Dangerfield's a great example. Of yeah, that. and so so many even and so many of them are yeah. dead. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and I mean, Mitch Hedberg Ron was Williams. an absolute genius. Maybe mind. one of my favorite comedians of all time. Oh, he's so funny. Oh my, I goodness. really liked Robin Williams. He was a and I close my letter. P.S. This is what the alphabet would look like if there were no Q or R. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, I used to love Seven Up. I still do, but I used to too. <laughs> I had a I had a friend who said, "Hey, would you like this frozen banana?" And I said, "No." But I would like a regular banana later, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all his oh, comedy stick was. It was, was just that. like kind of like just that whole yeah. all of that. I, hey, I, I still like Bill Cosby. I'm just gonna throw. Oh it out man, there. still a fan. That Bill Cosby, the stand up when he did in the brown suit, dude. Oh, good as it got, dude. I, Dad I will still is listen. great. Give us yeah, chocolate cake. cake. <laughs> <laughs> I like the. I like the one where he talks about the restaurant and like how he doesn't let his kids eat at the restaurant because he's not going to waste like a you know he's not going to spend twenty dollars on a steak that they're just going to throw on the floor yeah. kind of thing. And then it's like, and then I love the and then we put them in the car, we take them to McDonald's <laughs> <laughs> after they sit there and they're like no water, no, yeah, no water. <laughs> Dude, I, I'll, I'll still listen to him. I don't care. I think I think he was taken out. I think he was character assassinated. Yeah, it's Rodney scary. Dangerfield. Some it's of his one liners too huh. were. I mean, he and he would just. Uh, Don Rickles was good. Don Rickles was something else. There's so many of those oh, classics, man. I could go back. At, you know, that's my child. My childhood in the summertime was Johnny Carson. You know, I'd stay up and yeah. watch that. Well, for me, night. childhood was listening to the Braves on TBS. You know, uh, Skip Carey. Oh, um, man. You know, just l- having it on in the background. Yep. You know, just hearing it in the background to me was Southern. And when we were Southern kids, they lost. Constantly. Oh yeah. Bob Horner, Bob Dale Horner, Murphy. Tracy, yeah. Um Bruce Benedict behind the plate. Oh man. Believe Glenn it or not, Hubbard at second. Johnny Carson was my childhood too, just his D V D set that was like the anniversary. <laughs> that was like the well, Johnny know, Carson was a yeah. classic. It was, yeah. I, I mean, just Carson. those shows are still good to watch. I mean I like the what was the one where he did it would be like the genie one where he'd have the answer. Oh yeah, he called it something Car- Carmack or something, Carmack the Great. Where he that would like good. give the answer and then open yeah. the letter. Yeah, yeah. Was funny. I, I like that. <laughs> All right. So uh, All right. for those of you listeners who have missed us, we're glad to be back. And if you haven't, if you've forgotten, this podcast is really about nothing and everything. No, no at it's the same a, time. listen. It's about. Um, Politics, religion, and the meaning of life. <laughs> and the meaning of life. And all the other things that Nana told you not to talk about at Whoa. the kitchen table. Man, I've forgotten all about that intro. Dude, he might so, have said that better than I could have. So, um, so we hope you're entertained. Tell your friends. 
Subscribe. We're back. Give us a review. We're back for real this time. Uh, we're no take backs. <laughs> and with any luck at all, we'll do this every week. <laughs> yeah. That James is, is mad because we tried to start back this podcast at one point, and then I never edited that episode. So we may release that at a later time. There you go. The false beginning. <laughs> <laughs> the false start episode. The false start. Hey, yeah. So, so. Uh, listener beware if you if you find listener yourself thinking beware. and you're some sort of a time warp it's because we just went and took some old material and republished it yeah <laughs> something like I'll that announce it. Yeah. All right. I'll All announce right. it until next time see you goodbye the have y'all heard about this podcast is produced by play it by ear audio leave us a review like us rate us or subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use if you wish to contact us or you have a suggestion for the show Email us at hyhatpodcast at gmail.com.